From Florida to Alaska, from the East Coast to the West Coast, join Jay and Steve celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary, traveling across North America in the Cool Nana Coach, their 27-foot Freedom Elite Class C motorhome, as they visit the many beautiful points of interest in all 50 United States on their golden anniversary adventure. In our last episode, we traveled into Whittier, Alaska, which is known as the gateway to Prince William Sound. We didn't spend much time in Whittier as we had arranged to get on the Alaska Railroad Spencer Glacier Discovery Tour, and uh, that took up most of our day. This area in Prince William Sound has been traveled for centuries as a passageway to Turnigan Arm and on into Cook Inlet and interior of Alaska regions. Many expeditions pass through here using the Portage Trail to cross over Maynard Mountain. In 1914, the Alaska Engineering Expedition envisioned on maps a rail line and tunnel to where Whittier is today. In 1941, the U.S. Army made the decision to build a railway line and tunnel to Passage Canal and build the Port of Whittier. A deep water port, ice-free year-round, would be used to bring in war material and personnel for the defense of Alaska. The rail tunnel construction effort was designed by Anton Anderson and was put in service by 1943. At the end of World War II, the Whittier Army port was temporarily abandoned. The events of the Cold War reactivated the base and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers began a massive construction program to facilitate a garrison of over 1,000 troops. The Cold War construction era resulted in the building of seven major structures which survive to this day. In 1960, the military deactivated the Whittier Army port and bulldozed and burned most of the wood-framed structures, leaving only the massive concrete buildings. The 1964 Alaska earthquake left the Cold War building unscathed while destroying the waterfront and rail yard facilities. Purchased initially by the city of Whittier in 1972, most of the Cold War buildings are still in use today and house the majority of Whittier's residents. The Alaska Railroad remains the heartbeat of Whittier, providing the deep water ice-free port with rail transportation of goods and materials throughout Alaska, and also providing the tens of thousands of visitors from cruise ships that visit the port with transportation to the various points of interest throughout Alaska, such as Seward, the glaciers of the Kenai Peninsula, Anchorage, the Matsu Valley, Denali National Park, and Fairbanks. Our visit to Whittier has been extremely brief and our boondocking site has been absolutely wonderful for us as a base camp from which to see the beautiful harbor and the surrounding snow-capped mountains, waterfalls and glaciers. We will certainly have to return here one day for a truly more extensive visit here in the heart of the Chugash region. Our next stop is in the village of the Nilchik on the Kenai Peninsula, approximately 150 miles southwest from Whittier. We pass through the Anton Anderson Tunnel, onto the Portage Road, and eventually back to the Seward Highway and begin our travels southward. The beautiful snow-capped Chugash Mountains make the drive all that more pleasant.
The drive is absolutely beautiful as we enter the famed Kenai Mountains and the Kenai Peninsula. The Kenai Peninsula area is prime vacation area for tourists and locals alike. Affordable state-run campsites are abundant as are several popular lakes and rivers just waiting for you to cast a line and catch your dinner. Cooper Landing stretches for several miles of the Sterling Highway. We spotted fuel available at milepost 48 at the Grizzly Inn and also at the Sunrise Inn at milepost 44.9. Cooper Landing is named for Joseph Cooper, a miner who discovered gold there in 1894. Cooper Landing is a popular destination in the summer thanks to its outdoor recreational activities. It is widely known for its excellent fishing on the Upper Kenai River, scenic rafting trips, hiking, and biking. Just before Skilak Lake, we encounter a 25-minute delay in a construction zone. But as I said earlier, the view is fantastic, so we relax and just take it all in. We would really appreciate you hitting that like button and also share this video with your friends. And when you subscribe, you'll be notified in advance as our latest video is released. Sterling, at milepost 81, is a community of approximately 6,000 people at the confluence of Moose and Kenai Rivers. It serves the summer influx of Kenai River sports fishermen, campers, and canoers paddling the Moose and Swanson Rivers. Services there include fuel, a dump station, laundromat, auto and RV parts stores, that's important to know, a post office, and fishing gear and license outlets. We eventually pass through Sterling and the major commerce town of Sedaltna, which we hope to explore on our way back. But for now, our goal is Nanilchik, where we hope to get a camp spot at one of the state campgrounds. These camp spots are first come, first serve, so arrival before 3 p.m. in order to get a spot is always advisable. The Nilchik is on our radar as it is a prime location where small fishing boats are brought into the Cook Inlet waters by heavy tractors as there are no deep water docks along the southwest shore of the Kenai Peninsula north of Homer. In three quarters of a mile, turn right on Mission Avenue. This should be very interesting to see. It's also known as a prime habitat for American bald eagles. We pull into the state campground near the village of the Nilchik, exactly where we want it to be. And there are two sites available. It's the 4th of July weekend, so campgrounds are very busy. 
There are only a dozen sites and we are very happy we got one. The campground is on high ground with level sites and a dump station nearby. The village of Nanilchik is within eyesight below us on low ground abutting the beach. We set up camp and hiked down to the beach and observed a young eagle in the creek hunting for a meal. Overhead, an adult bald eagle flies by with his catch. I wonder where his nest is. Scanning the sky, my eyes follow the bird past the Russian Orthodox Church high on a hill across the Nanilchik Valley. Behind the church, Jane spots the eagle's nest. There are two eaglets in the nest being fed individually by the mother. What a day this has been. If only the weather would cooperate and shed some sunlight on us, but we are happy to take what we can get. We watched the eagle nest for the better part of 45 minutes as the young eaglets popped their heads up intermittently to be fed by their mother. And now for our second objective here in Nilchik, the unique fishing boat launches and retrievals. We hop on Equinox and drive down the steep hill to the beach area below. Two tractor crews are standing by to retrieve fishing vessels and bring them ashore. As I said earlier, with no deep water docks, heavy wheel loaders converted for this very purpose carefully drive the boat trailers into the surf about 100 feet offshore and await the fishing boat to cruise onto the partially submerged trailer. The fishing boat has only one chance to steer his vessel onto the waiting trailer as the water is only 30 or so inches in depth and a miss would certainly mean grounding. Success! The boat is on the trailer. It gets its bow hooked up and away they go onto the beach to fish another day. Well, it's only a one-night stopover, and our intention was to see a couple of the fishing village of the Nilchik's interesting things to do. Eagles and a unique fishing vessel launch and retrieval method. With both accomplished, we'll now retire to the cool Nana coach for some dinner and relaxation. We leave tomorrow for Homer, where we have reservations at the Heritage RV Park for a week of base camping on the famous Homer Spit. All this and more on our next episode of Jane and Steve's Golden Anniversary Adventure.